All right. So the topic tonight is called um, Be the Expert. And I'm going to talk to you um, about catering and events. So let's see, who am I? And how did I get here? And why did Tiso ask me to speak to you? So again, my name is Dana Blockran, CPCE, CWC. Um, I graduated from Southern Methodist University in 2001. Um, in May of 2001 with an advertising and photography degree, which is completely random. Um, and as you can do the math, it's a couple months right before September 11th happened. So as soon as that happened, the advertising world, the bottom fell out and there were no um, jobs in the advertising world. So I quickly scrambled and was looking for something different to do. And I... Um, knew of a caterer, Larry Goldstein, um, who owned a restaurant and catering company that my grandfather actually worked at um, when I was a little kid. And so I gave him a call and went to my first NACE meeting in October of 2001. And really the rest of my career is history from that moment forward. So I um, met some people at BBJ Linen that night at my first NACE meeting. And from there, I was um, essentially offered a job. So I started interning at BBJ. And as you can see from the list down below, I've only had five jobs in my 22 years um, post-college, but uh, 17 years of those jobs uh, were taken up by two different companies. Um, Sorry, I didn't know if that question was for me. Anyways, um, so really exciting through all of these companies. I've had the opportunity to work for a linen company, a hotel, um, my own wedding planning company, a catering company, and a restaurant company. So multifaceted through the industry. Um, and now I am the president of the foundation of NACE. So I have worked my way through NACE, um, basically every role in the DFW chapter, and now I sit as the foundation president. Let's see. Next slide, why isn't it going? Oh, there we go. Okay. So working in the hospitality industry is not necessarily a job, it's a lifestyle and it's a passion. And so you're going to hear me say this throughout the entire presentation. You've got to love love this job or it's something that can kill you. So um, the hospitality world used to be, and I'm sure in Las Vegas especially, 90% hotels, and it's definitely not now. So as I said before, um, it's multifaceted. So you need to get to know all the different facets of the business um, from restaurants to bars, country clubs, venues, off-premise catering, um, ranch managers, private house managers, destination management companies. There's so many different facets um, that go into the hospitality industry these days. And it's no longer a Monday through Friday, nine to five job. So you definitely need to put your heart and soul into it. It's definitely not always glamorous, but it does become incredibly rewarding. And I find that you have to have a servant's heart because it does become your job to serve people. And you never know what you'll get yourself into, but you gotta jump in and get dirty. So um, these pictures here is an event that we all worked on. It was Cattle Baron's Ball, which is one of the largest um, nonprofit groups um, in the country. And it's for American Cancer Society. And here in Dallas one year, it poured down rain and um, it became the disaster in the pasture. And uh, we all had to get very dirty. This is our friend, Wendy, um, getting, her, getting her feet wet here in the mud. Um, so next, I have just put together some food and beverage tips for you. And again, as I know, there's lots of different levels of uh, catering professionals on this call. I didn't want to give you some of the obvious things that you know, so I thought I would just give some different tips here for you. So um, I think it's most important to build your relationship with your chefs and your operations managers, know their hot buttons, um, know what they love, what they hate, 
and this will definitely take you farther than you definitely think it will. Um, I worked for Wolfgang Putt Catering for nine years, and it was always a joke with our team, our chefs. We would have to do everything, our ops team, from get their plates to get all their all their equipment. And now I work for a small restaurant group, um, Urban Family, and they laugh when anyone on our team goes to get like their plates or their kitchen equipment. And they're like, what are you doing? Like, get out of the kitchen. We can handle it ourselves. So you need to kind of know what your team's expectations are so you can help them. Um, but if you want respect, you need to know how to speak what your department speaks. So learn the lingo. So know what a BEO is, know what all the words are that they're trying to say so you can speak the same thing that they do. Um, pay attention to the, all the details, know how many service tables it takes, how many um, pounds of ice do you need per, um, per person per bar, um, how many shots are in a bottle, how long does it take for your kitchen to plate 100 entree plates that are being served? Um, learn the different sizes of a tablecloth. Takes um, for a table that's like a 60 inch round, add 60 inches to it, and there you have your 120 inch round tablecloth. Uh, for a 72 inch round, again, add 60 inches, and there's your 132 inch round. So again, learn the lingo. It's small things that you can understand, and it will take you a far away. So um, understand and try all the food. You don't have to love it, but you need to at least try it one time and don't have any food prejudice. If you don't like it after you've tried it, at least you can say you've tried it. Um, know what's in season, especially all the vegetables, and this will help your chef um, control food costs. Try to understand the difference between seated meals and buffets. This will help you understand uh, food quantities and staffing quantities. So people say a lot of time that buffets are less expensive than seated dinners, but of course you have difference in staffing costs. Also, um, food waste is a very hot topic right now. Um, with seated dinners, just can control um, the food order and usually only have about a 5% overage. Um, but with buffets, they have to order so much more. So you tend to have a 20 to 30% overage. Um, with food waste, you can learn of different uh, homeless shelters in your community and see um, what the laws are. Some of them will take leftover food, usually not if it's already cooked and been out, but sometimes they'll take stuff that hasn't already been um, fully heated. So you can learn that. You can also um, research if there's um, farms in your area. Like we have a farm called Bonton Farms here in the Dallas area that produces um, different vegetables and stuff that's like not perfect. And you can buy all of their stuff that again is gonna be cut up and put on um, dishes. And so people won't necessarily see that it's not perfect items um, and those will go really far. And so you can partner with those different uh, farms um, get your surf safe certificates so you know what food temperature should be um, and when it's no longer to serve to your, serve items to your guests or keep it on a buffet. But do whatever you can to be the expert in your field. Get your certification, whether that's your CPCE, CMP, CSEP, or CWIP. Um, there's so many different opportunities, but see what um, makes sense to you and study for that because it always will help you put your, le put the, your leg up um, when you're looking for a job or just you can be the expert in your field. Um, Wolfgang Puck used to always have the motto and it's written on the kitchen in Los Angeles. It says, um, buy the freshest ingredients and don't F it up. But he actually spells it out. Um, and so that's what it really comes down to. Just fresh, wonderful food and do a good job with it. And it goes great. Um, some of my favorite Catering events that I have worked on is um, opening opening the Pro Museum of Nature and Science um, 11 years ago, and we had like six events in a row, uh, one for the family um, right when it opened, one for um, 1,200 people called Night at the Museum, um, and then one for the public. So um, getting to work on that was really fun, doing Skyball, which is for the military um, donation uh, with a partnership between Wolfgang Puck Catering and um, the Robert Irvine Foundation. So that uh, was a really fun opportunity. It was um, 5,000 people seated dinner 
I'm sorry, buffet, and then a seated dinner the next day for the top 500 people. So that was like a really great fun event, but any event that you get to do and where you can be creative, work with your chefs, create a specialty menu is always a fun opportunity. Um, some wedding, some wedding tips, some planning. Um, it'll take as long as the amount of time that you have to plan. So if you have three months, it'll take three months. If you have six months or a year, it'll take that. So use all the time that you have. Um, make the process all about the clients and what they want. The wedding should reflect them from the start to the finish. I don't have a strong opinion is a valid response. So learn how you can work with that. Sometimes people are indecisive. Working on a family's budget is one of the hardest conversations, but you need to have it early and have it often. Family is letting you into their personal finances and family dynamic. Come from a place of comfort because that can be very stressful. Um, planning is a lot of pressure, so do as much as you can that's based on etiquette, but always know that etiquette is in, is always evolving, so um, use that because it makes people feel comfortable. Um, it's like it's not that you're making something up, and no matter how hard you try, you can really only get one thing done at a time, so work off a very detailed checklist. And surround yourself with a team of people who aren't afraid to do the hard things and work with you. Um, I've had a ton of weddings that have been really fun and challenging. My favorite is that I've done a family's uh, a family set of weddings that I have done um, three of their daughters and two of the extended family. So it's fun when you become like a part of the family. Um, and then I had one wedding where I knew I probably should have fired the client and she probably should have fired me, but it was the only one in all the years. And the funniest part is when she was getting ready to walk down the aisle, she was just the worst client. And um, right when she started to walk down the aisle, she was like yelling and screaming at everybody. And she turned and I had stepped wrong and I stepped on the back of her dress and the whole back like ripped out the um, train. So sometimes karma just happens. Um, tips when working with clients, do not ever tell clients no if you can avoid it, rather help them find what you need. This is a refer referral-based business that we work in, so they'll remember you for it and come back to you the next time. Um, if you promise to have something to a client by a certain date, get it to them. Even if you can't, make sure you respond or email and let them know an updated date. Building trust that you will do what you say is very important. If your clients trust you, it makes the process a whole lot easier. Remember the little things. Remember your client's favorite food, favorite color, birthday, kids' names. Little things make a huge difference. Your clients may not always be right, but it's their perspective that matters, not yours. Don't forget, it's not always about you. Um, don't argue with your clients. It's much easier to focus your energy on fixing whatever they need. And if you do it right, your clients will become your friends. Um, a couple things that I wish I knew sooner. Um, it's important to build a village. It's about building a relationship that you can call on. A strong network gets you everything that you need. Join um, associations, networking, associations and committees, whether within your company or industry-wise. Knowing others can only help you. Industry organizations are an incredible way to meet people from all over the country and expand your reach and opportunities. There, um, there are really little, no little people Everyone from housekeeping to the dishwashers, they'll clean up your messes, literally. Take ownership for your mistakes. Never point out other people's mistakes in front of others. And don't take business decisions personally. Sometimes decisions are made for reasons that have nothing to do with you. Um, a couple of stories here. Um, one of my uh, closest friends, um, Lauren, she and I met at a NACE conference a ton, uh, years and years ago, I think it was 12 years ago in New Orleans, um, maybe 11 years ago, anyways, in New Orleans, and 
she was from Dallas, but we didn't know each other. And she just started hanging out with us and she was looking for a job. She had a job, but didn't love it. And we were like, you know, she would be a great fit at Wolfgang Puck at the time. And she ended up interviewing and coming to work for the company. And we were um, counterparts. And now she runs the Dallas region and is doing great. So it's just about networking and knowing knowing your people and using the time that you have wisely. Um, another very good friend of mine, um, we were both on the NACE board, the Dallas NACE board together at the same time. She was from Chicago and I was from here and we were actually competitors. She ran a uh, rental company. She owned a rental company here, moved from Chicago with the rental company. And I was at BBJ Linen and everybody's like, oh, you guys are going to be competitors. You'll hate each other. Well, in fact, we became closest of friends. We're like sisters now. And it's like, you know, not everyone is your competitor, learn your competitors inventory and how you can help each other. And that's what networking can do. It can make you better by knowing each other and their inventory rather than seeing each other as competitors. Um, and another, the third um, story here is we have a, we created a dinner here in Dallas called dinner with an enemy. And it was all through our nice relationships where we would learn um, we would have dinner at each other's properties so we could know what each other's space looked like, what their menus were, what they were doing. Um, because if one of us wasn't available, we would want to recommend and refer the other one. Um, so it's called dinner with an enemy. So rather than um, just telling again the client, no, it was this is what you could do and how you could do it. So um, there can also be uh, associations outside of the industry. I'm a member of the Junior League of Dallas, La Dame de Scaffier. So sometimes there are things that, that can be outside of the traditional uh, hospitality industry that can get you, give you business clients as well as help grow you personally. Um, a few, few last minute tips that'll help uh, take you a little bit further. Always, always say thank you, whether it's with a thank you note or an email. Thank your clients, thank your staff, um, and thank vendors if they've helped you. Um, ask for feedback on how you can do better. Always look for ways to improve. Uh, do not underestimate the power of face-to-face -face meetings. Connections grow stronger in person. Through um, COVID and all this time past COVID, we're so used to doing everything on Zoom and computer and um, I think we've gotten so far away from in-person meetings, but we need to remember that when we can, in-person meetings um, really, really help grow relationships. Um, respect everyone's time, share a timeline at least one week in advance. You can always make changes to your timeline, but know that sometimes vendors are working on multiple projects um, in one day and they need to know more than install starts at two, strike is at midnight. Sometimes they have to know a little bit more than just that. Um, and always, always tag your vendors in social media posts. Give credit where credit's due. Just because you may be the planner or the photographer um, or the caterer, there's other people that have worked on things and you want to always give credit. Um, and like I said before, if you do what you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. So um, you can see here just a few pictures like the Wolfgang Puck catering team. Um, has become family. We attend each other's weddings. Um, the Shea family, as I had mentioned before, it's the family I did all three of their kids' weddings. They now are the family that I've worked for at Urban Family the last couple years. Um, and they're like an extended family of mine. All their kids now have multiple children. Um, and in the top is uh, Amber Allen. She's the NACE national president. And like I said, I'm the um, foundation president. So again, networking gets you pretty far. And then here's my TSO friends and foundation of NACE. Um, so using your networking opportunities can get you really far. So take that and um, love the hospitality industry. You guys have any question should I stop sharing here Celine you're more than welcome to uh stop uh the slide but yes we do have um some questions so right now um I have one saying you mentioned that you worked with competitors and uh possible uh recommendations have you been in a situation where you have to recommend a vendor that has not been fair to you
Um, I'm sure I have. <laughs> Can't think off the top of my head. Um, someone hasn't been fair. Um, I'm, I'm sure that I have, but I would say that I would always act professional, treat everybody with respect uh, the way that you would want to be treated. So even if they are a competitor and don't treat you perfectly, um, it goes a lot further to, you know, treat somebody, you know, kill a person with kindness. No, absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, to follow that, um, what's the most difficult part of working with corporate clients versus private clients? The most difficult part with cor corporate clients? Mm -hmm. I would say sometimes the best part of corporate clients is it's not personal. So it's not their own personal money. Um, it's a lot easier for them to make decisions. Um, on the flip side, sometimes it's not as fun because it's just like a transactional. And me personally, I'm a, a bit of an emotional type planner. Um, not in a bad way, but I mm -hmm. like to get to know you and become part of your life. Uh, right. So sometimes in the corporate world, it's, like I said, a little bit more transactional, mm -hmm. um, but you can get things done a lot quicker. Um, I think with corporate, sometimes budgets come into play and when you can do a lot of things that are really cool and you have a lot more opportunity, sometimes the corporate clients are just like checking things off a list and sometimes they just want to do the same thing they've done year after year rather than um something new and cool and it's just like no copy paste repeat when you're like yeah. wait there's this cool new thing out there and sometimes they don't always want to try for new things so when you're working with corporate clients um do you do they usually have a representative like their own event coordinator or are, do you yeah. ever you know work with them directly how, how does that work yeah I think both I think um the bigger the company then they typically have a corporate planner on site. Um, but if it's a smaller company or someone that you've worked with multiple times, then they trust you and let you be the person that makes all the, you know, recommendations for them. Um, so I think it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. And then any um, difficulty or, or notable um, difficult times with private clients? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that Private clients can't, budgets can come into play. I think they have very unrealistic expectations sometimes, you know, especially in this Instagram world where people yeah. see things all the time and it's champagne taste on a beer budget a lot. Uh, Pinterest has made people think that they can do everything and Instagram, you see the world, but it's not necessarily realistic or your venue doesn't give you two days to set up or three days to set up or you're not paying for two or three days to set up. Um, so you don't really understand or you see this like amazing thing rigging from the, you know, ceiling and you don't understand that like, well, that there's a cost to that or a set of days that comes with that or same thing with a seated dinner and you don't want to find out if people have allergies and stuff like that. I, I deal with that a lot with one of our clients. Um, they just say like, oh, I don't want to get dietary, but you're doing a like seated dinner or something like you have to, sometimes it takes a little bit of extra work, um, but you have to take those steps to ensure that the, the event is going to run smoothly. Okay. Now to follow that, considering, you know, what people see on uh, social media, um, for your particular role now, how important is a social media presence? Like, do you have a presence of like your own work or is it tied in with your, um, I guess your company or whoever you are associated with at the time? Yeah. Um, now I, I only represent urban family concepts, um, and the three restaurants and our event space. So all my stuff is currently just urban family, but I would say that to answer your social media question, I think everything is social media is so important. It's definitely taken over um, like print and all that. So I think the magazines have decreased and social media presence is so much more important mm -hmm. um, to the point where even like PR companies and such are not getting airtime like on TV and that kind of stuff. Like everything is gone to social media and reels and TikTok and all the things and some things that, you know, even even me like don't understand how to do all the new fun things. So sometimes you just have to get the younger generation to help out and do 
um, because it's ever changing. But I think that, you know, especially if you're talking to brides or younger people that are online all the time, like that's what they're looking at. They're scrolling all day long. And so I think social media is super, super important and should be factored into your marketing plan. Wherever you can find it, I guess, right? Yeah. Nice. Um, so then do you per se have like a lot of creative freedom in your current role? Yeah, we current we personally do have a marketing company um included in our team as well. Mm -hmm. Um we have been thinking about taking a step back and just using our in-house team because we also mm -hmm. have myself plus one other that does the marketing. Um, but we do have a lot of creative freedom, like my my company is wonderful and allows us, like if we come up with an idea, they kind of give us freedom to do whatever we want. Um, but we also work for a family, like a family run business. So it's not a big corporation. So we're kind of allowed to do whatever we want, much different than like when I was at Wolfgang Puck where everything was corporate driven. And so you had to run everything through um, a much different process than here at Urban Family, where again, it's a family run business. So we get to make all the decisions ourselves. Nice. I mean, so in that case, do you think if you were to, I guess, maybe if you were to leave this company, would, do you think you would go to corporate or would you stay in the realm of like, maybe not a small business, but a family focused business? I have no idea. I mean, there's pros and cons to both. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved, loved, loved my time at Wolfgang Puck. It was amazing. Um, I learned so many things and I had the opportunity to work on events that um, put me in the realm of things that I would never dream of being able to do. Um, and I absolutely love my time here at Urban Family. It is a family. Um, they are my extended family. So it's a wonderful opportunity. I get the say in I'm in all the conversations of decisions being made for the company, whether it's on the event side, the restaurant side. Um, I also help handle the family, their personal business as well. So um, it's a really interesting dynamic. I don't know what I would do if I left. Um, I'm a little bit far removed from um, the day-to-day -day event world. We do have an event space, but somebody else gets to handle that. <laughs> Luckily, it's not me on an everyday basis. Um, I oversee the catering, but um, so I don't know what, what my next step would be. Um, I'm having a lot of fun also with the foundation of NACE. We are raising money. This family that I work for, they have a family foundation as well, and they kind of have just given me carte blanche opportunity to um, put money where I see fit and donate and they're very philanthropic. So it's been a really great opportunity to stretch my my wings and learn about all different different things, different opportunities. So I'm very blessed. I have been working in both both facets of um corporate catering and family catering. Nice. Um so would you say that you're on top of trends in terms of um, I guess like the catering part of uh, your job right now? Do you guys like gear towards trends? Or do you guys have a specific vision that is very on brand with the, the Urban Family brand? Um, I think that Urban is very um, in line with how Urban wants to do it. Okay. It's a small, it's smaller, like downtown Plano, which is a small little mm -hmm. suburb in the Dallas area. So mm -hmm. I think that we kind of do it how Urban wants to do it. It's not like super on trend. I mean, we're definitely not no Wolfgang Puck catering. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like I stay up in the trends with um NACE and I go to meetings all the time and I go to cool new restaurants and I try to um stay up on social media and pay attention to what's going on and in the um in the area and stuff. So you can, I think that you can be knowledgeable and pay attention to what's happening and what the new trends are by making yourself knowledgeable, even if like you're at, um, I'm at a restaurant group that um, like we have three different restaurants. One is a seafood concept, one is um, a pizza concept and one is a Tex-Mex restaurant. So of course we have three different flares, but um, I still make sure that I'm always out and about and see what's going on and read magazines and go to conferences and that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, definitely staying active in the community then. That's uh, another thing that's super big. And I know you mentioned in networking. So, oh my gosh, get ready to stay active, folks. Um, I have a couple more questions for you. Um, let's see. Um, would do you, what is your favorite event or like the largest event that you've worked? Um, the largest event that I have worked on. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think. Probably Skyball was the largest. Um, we did 5,000 for buffet mm -hmm. um, in a large warehouse space. Um, that's probably the largest event I can think of that I've personally been in charge of. Mm -hmm. um, I did Night at the Museum, which is transforming a fourth floor museum, um, different stations on every floor. That's 1,200 people. Um, I did that for seven years, um, and that was really cool and creative. So two very different kind of events. One is um, same big, big, huge buffets, and one is super creative type of uh, food. So different, but fun. Thanks. Um, earlier in your presentation, you mentioned, of course, you know, giving back and saying thank you to your vendors and your clients. Um, now, of course, depending on if it's corporate or, you know, a smaller business, is there, or I guess, what's the most appropriate thank you gift, uh, whether that be to your vendor or your client? Because I know sometimes, um, you know, it has to be ethical or you don't want to seem like it's a bribe. So what does that look like um, when, you know, giving gifts? A great question. Um, you know, some people can't, so I think a lot of corporate clients can't receive or corporate planners mm -hmm. say they can't receive take gifts. Mm -hmm. um, if that's the case, uh, we would like make a donation in their name to a, a charity or an organization that um, we're a part of. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of social planners um, love to be like wine and dine. So you can always do um, like a, a fam or something where you're um, showing off your space as well so mm -hmm. you know they're getting something but you're getting something in return because you're bringing them in to see the space um and if you're you know at a hotel or something they could have a overnight stay a nice dinner um maybe a spa treatment but then you're doing a nice dinner so they're seeing like what your space can can produce and then hopefully they're booking an, an event in return um but i think some some great gifts um could be anything that's like really personalized to your event space um for food and beverage wise like at puck we would always come up with some cool like on trend um food item around the season and try to deliver deliver that to people um trying to think it's been a while no, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's kind of hard, you know, because you always have to see, like, is this within line? Like, are you breaking any rules? All that good stuff. But, you know, that's, that's good. Those are good examples. Um, how did the urban family steal you away from Wolfgang Puck? Or were, were you just ready for a change, maybe? <laughs> they actually didn't. Um, they oh. had asked me multiple times to come work for them, um, but the time was never right. And so then when COVID happened, mm -hmm. um, I actually left Puck uh, due to COVID and um, was, you know, one of the one of the early casualties of COVID. And so then I was doing the third wedding for their ch their child and, or their third oh. daughter. And so um, when that was wrapping up, I actually presented them with a proposal and said, you need me in your life full time. Um, and they were like, OK, why? And so I had come up with the proposal of why I thought all of their businesses needed somebody to pull them together. And because um, they have three restaurants, a workout facility, um, a couple Starbucks, and then they needed somebody just to kind of bring their life together. Mm -hmm. um, and so I presented them with a proposal and they were like, all right, great. And so we were like, let's try this for a year and see if it works out. And it's been uh, a little over two years now. And um, I basically, kind of, I mean, I'll pat myself on the back. I kind of am the glue that holds their family together and it's fun. I love it. And I've helped grow their catering since then. And um, I love it. It's fun. Very different. 
Um, so again, through networking and all my opportunity, I have had that opportunity to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, one for our students. Um, so this might probably be a twofer, but one, when do you know is the right time to move to a different job? And then two, well, without, of course, any extreme circumstances. Um, and two, since you marketed yourself and, and created this proposal, um, maybe as a student, how would you or how did you work in um, like knowing your strengths and, and being confident that, you know, this person needs you? Um, how, how did you go about that? Um, I think that it's pretty, it's pretty challenging. I will say that I'm not the most confident person in the world, but um, my friends all give me a really hard time because I have had like really great opportunities. Um, I think that things just like work out, you know, and to when you should when you should know when it's time to leave a job, like when you're no longer happy, you know, we do, we work in this industry, I feel more than we're with our families and with the people that we love, you know, it kind of takes over our lives. And when I was at Puck, I was working at least six days a week, um, if not more. And I loved it. Like I couldn't see past that. I would have never done anything different. Um, you couldn't have told me not to. And now that I don't do that and that I have some balance um, and boundaries, I kind of couldn't imagine going back to that. And so I think that when you hit that point of a little bit of burnout and that it's not fun on a maybe not everyday basis because we don't have to have fun every day. But when you're not like having you're not having passion anymore and you kind of have to think about it more than you don't, then maybe it's the opportunity to start thinking about what else brings you passion and what else makes you happy, um, because it is a job and we do it. Like I said, at least in this industry, we do it so much of our of our day and of our time. Um, and so if, if you're no longer happy, you have to find happiness and passion. Um, this job, you don't become a millionaire um, in the hospitality industry. I mean, that's just reality. So, I mean, maybe there's few, right? A few and far between, but um, it's a passion and you have to love it. So when you no longer love it, you kind of have to move on. And then to have um, enough confidence, I think we all just need to have those people in our lives that build us up and make us know that we're great and we can do hard things and put your mind to it. And um, a bunch of people, you know, told me like, you can do this, you're great. And I just put this proposal together and met with a couple people that were entrepreneurs and asked for their advice and how I should do this and how do I go about it and how do I actually ask for money and ask for the right amount of money. And, um, I did it and I'm like, I'm super happy now. So it's hard, but you can do it. And I apologize, right? Cause nothing, you know, as cliche as it sounds, nothing's really worth having without the hard work and, you know, you being in it, but all right. Well, I think those are all the questions that we have. Thank you so, so much again for taking the time out of your day and, and talking to us and giving us these tips and just kind of giving us a peek of what it's like to be both a caterer and event planner and just kind of being in the mix of things. Um, for the folks at home, thank you for joining us today. If you would like to participate in any other TSO um, events, we still have TSO Next um, and TSO Now as a reference for you to check out. Uh, for the remaining of the semester, we have our TSO Cares event happening until December 7th, where we partnered with US Vets um, and we are donating some hygiene um, essentials and some gift cards uh, to the organization. But again, thank you so much, everyone, and have a good rest of your evening. Thank, thank you. you.